Hello. Uh, I figured as I was reorganizing my uh, bookshelf, I thought I would go through and uh, share some book reviews of some of my favorite uh, armoring books. Um, <laughs> hopefully this will be a useful guide towards uh, building your own collection and knowing what you're going to buy before you buy it and what it's useful for. If you're just interested in the design of it, or if you're interested in making it yourself. Um, yeah, so let's just get this ball rolling. So this is, uh, out of all the books that I would probably start with, uh, this is one of my favorites. Uh, the Techniques of Medieval Armor Reproduction, the 14th Century by Brian Price. Uh, it has a lot of fabulous pictures, um, all in black and white. And um, the, my favorite part about this book in general is that it gives very specific step-by-step -step guides on how to do it yourself, what tools are necessary, uh, the steps individual uh, to be able to get from uh, metal, where it tells you where to find the metal, to actual completion, to a uh, reasonable 14th century kit. A lot of the techniques in here uh, could also be applied as far as the patterning and so forth to other forms of armoring, but the main point of this one is to use uh, <laughs> metal. This is William Shakespeare, who is uh, very jealous, apparently, of this particular project. Uh, I'd like to give him some attention so that he can uh, stay off of the table, uh, for at least for now. But I believe the step-by-step the -step guide in here is probably one of the best that you can get your hands on. It also has some patterns in here, uh, although keep in mind that metal patterns are not the same sort of thing as uh, fabric patterns. Uh, since you're going to be raising and making them three-dimensional, uh, I would also recommend uh, that it is kind of a touch-and-go thing as you build it that uh, the edges will change and so forth and you'll have to clean up your edges and the shape of it as you go uh, so that uh, these aren't the, the be-all end-all of you take these patterns and they will be what they are. It's a little bit more like um, millinery in that sort of sense where it's um, more or less the starting shape to get to where you're going in the end. Since you are going to be stretching and molding and thinning the materials in some spots and thickening the materials in others, uh, it, they, they do change a little bit. But it's a great place to start. Um, and as far as a good book to have on your bookshelf, whether you're interested in uh, specifically the 14th century or making metal armor or making plastic armor, uh, this will get you a good idea as to where to start on how to make them all work together. The articulation of it is explained quite well, and uh, in, in general, this is you know, not a terribly expensive book to have for all of the information that's in it. Uh, yes, all right. So if you're going to get one, I would get this one. Now the next one on here is The Complete Metal Smith uh, by Tim, oh, hopefully I'm not going to say that name horribly wrong, McCright, maybe? Um, I apologize in advance for that particular pronunciation. Uh, the Complete Mill Smith is more or less the book to get to give you the, the general basics on where to start on how to do pretty much anything with metal. So if you want the, the basics of how to weld, how to um, do lapidary, how to do all of the starts of all of the cool metal things that you've ever wanted to do, the basics of it are in this book. It's uh, a pretty durable book. It's it's meant to be specifically used in a workroom, uh, and it goes over all of the names for the tools. And it's not the be all end all of any particular uh, any particular craft. But if you ever wondered what that one thing that you've seen on metal is called, it's in here. It's absolutely in here. Um, it, it explains in very simple terms uh, pretty much anything that you can do with metal, uh, which is fantastic. It's very beginner friendly. Uh, even if you're coming at it from like a fabric person like myself, it's uh, 
very approachable book and in general quite useful as a uh, a tool in the shop to be able to use and love and uh, move forward in, in the world of making things. Now as far as really pretty things go, Fashion and Armor in Renaissance Europe is basically a book with a lot of very pretty color pictures. Now, if you want to see uh, a few examples and an overview of more or less the epitome of the height of um, armor technology, this will walk you through the, uh, arguably, the height of what we, what Western armor has achieved. It has a lot of very, very pretty pictures. It's mostly uh, later period stuff, but that's what we have most of anyway. But it goes into a lot of the interesting details, how it would all look together. And in general, it is one of those nice ones to be able to take out and be like, well, you know, do you want a Renaissance armor? Well, do you want the, the Maximilian style? Do you want the Italian style? Do you want the German style? You know, there's all sorts of, you know, it's not great for, you know, learning your basic terms, but it's great for pictures and looking at really pretty things. And in general, um, I just like having books that are pretty. So that's definitely in, in that particular uh, route there. As far as another basic for um, leather working, this one's pretty good, the arts and craft of leather. Um, it has a lot of the basics in here. Uh, it isn't particularly um, comprehensive, but it does cover a lot of different stuff. It, it tends to be very much on the you know, modern maker side of things, but it does have a pretty wide variety and uh, the basics of like thinning out your edges and what tools are and how to make them do the things that you want them to do. If you're looking for a basic on this, or at least something that you can hand off to a student and be like, here are directions, <laughs> follow these, um, this is not a bad place to start. It also has some really pretty pictures and goes over a little bit of the history. In general, it, for how not terribly expensive this was, I thought that was a pretty good book to have. Um, it, it does cost more now, just because it's, I think, um, not as commonly in print as it was. Uh, but uh, having a basic leather working book on your shelf I think can be very helpful in uh, making armor and making all of the bits that go with it since pretty much any bit of armor has leather work that is uh, integral in uh, attaching it onto the person and uh, making it look the absolute prettiest in its detail. Now if you're looking for a basic overview of when armor was in the most use, warfare, the Middle Ages, from 768 to 1487, uh, by Nicholas Hooper and Matthew Bennett, is uh, a really pretty book. It has a lot of very nice pictures. It goes over a lot of maps and why it would be used and in, in what sort of way. Um, it goes over a little bit of the um, evolution from what's being used for where and why different technologies were implemented. But for the most part, this is a tactical warfare kind of book. Um, but it does have some things of putting things into context of you know, buying tapestry to um, some of the, the lovely um, you know, painted helmets and how, you know, it does, goes, does go into a little bit of, you know, Victorians uh, cleaning off beautiful painted armor um, and, you know, how that makes a difference in the, the warfare itself. Uh, so, well, not the Victorians, but, well, uh, <laughs> but what types of armor and why, more or less, uh, since pretty much fashion uh, it pay, plays a very large part in armor, so does warfare. Uh, if you know your fashion quite well, this can fill in some of the gaps of the, so why is that there? Um, it's not great if you want, like, this armor moves into that armor, moves into this armor. But it gives, uh, some, some of the gaps are filled in, which is nice. Um, 
as far as a uh, metal working book that is similar on the same sort of level as the leather working book, um, that is more or less a beginner's gist. Um, this one isn't quite as good in a lot of ways as the um, uh, the uh, complete metalsmith, but uh, it does have a lot of really pretty pictures. It goes into a little bit more detail uh, on some of the basics, but mostly it's pretty. It's it, it's uh, looking at it more or less as though you are a beginner metalworking art student, and so it has some weird applications as examples, but it does go over the basics of you know, how to raise things, how to, to uh, dish things, and um, you know, the basics of the tools and what they're called, and um, in general it's pretty. Um, I, I would say that I don't mind having it on my shelves because I have it, but if you're going, looking between this and the, the uh, complete metalsmith, I would go with the other one first. Uh, and then, of course, for more and more pretties, the Noble Art of the Sword, Fashion and Fencing in Renaissance Europe, 1520 to 1630. Oh, oh, the pretty, pretty pictures. Um, this is mostly later period stuff, as you can tell, it's Renaissance. Um, and um, it does get into really tying in the, um, the art of the, the, the fighting styles and a lot of the swords and so forth that go with the armor and talking about the manuals and some of the things that you can find in there and why swords were the length that they were and how it ties into fashion and in general it's just a very very pretty book it's not terribly in depth um it as far as you know connecting this particular period to that particular thing it is not in chronological order uh, which always tends to be a little bit confusing, um, but it has a lot of good information in there as far as another filling in the gaps and having gorgeous, gorgeous pictures. Um, and this was uh, by Tobias uh, Crapwell. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. If not, I apologize as well. Um, all of the ISBNs in here uh, and the titles and so forth will also be in the description. Um, but uh, these are just books that I've had on my bookshelf and have used and found useful. And, uh, and I hope that you might find them useful too. Anyway, thank you.